Hey yo everyone, one this this is the Happy Anime Cafe Manager here with another walkthrough episode for the game, game Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Anyway, uh, before I get started, I want to say Happy Memorial Day. Day. Yeah, give my heart out to. Uh, to all, all our uh, fallen warriors in the United States of America, God bless you all. Anyway, well, to, to those that are celebrating the occasion of respect, respecting our uh, fallen warriors, well, yeah, well, whether you're uh, out there, if they're playing in the sprinklers, going to see a movie, playing video games, drinking beer, anyway. Anyway, all the good for fun. So anyway, let's see the events unfold. So at the end of the last episode, I came around this part and I think I presented a wine glass. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. The Killer. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room, your client had no idea that Juan Correa had been murdered. But how? How do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass? Mr. The Killer supposed to... Mr. The Killer supposed client through Mr. Correa had only fainted. Which is why this uh, glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. I see your point, Mr. Edwards. What is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. With it, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? Isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian and Andrews really is your client, as you claim, then your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Correa's death. If not, then that could only mean, mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. How strange. Yes. Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix. If the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Mr. Edwards, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, oh, sorry. That, that sounded like an awfully weak objection to me. Anyway, I, I am positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items the, the killer left behind to get here, I just know the very, very outcome of this trial lies with those items. Request taking. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. It was it. That is what occurred. I trust my memory and I believe I have made no mistakes. Hmm. So you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting one client is the first step to building trust in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. One week ago, are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. Of course, I had my own preparation, and I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please, stop. In any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time.
you ask why on that specific night? No. I try to fulfill all the conditions of my client's request. That's for why I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for, for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear shaped figure in Juan Corita's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for you. He must be talking about this bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference after all. That's correct. And if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where that bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Rice, what was, was this testimony just now any important? What the killer said sounds plausible, but in the end, it's just his conjecture. No, Your Honor. I don't think it's very important. Hmm. Well then, witness, please continue. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was that brief pause? It's probably just my imagination. I need to uh, find something more definite to catch this guy on. Can we both believe that your testimony up to this point has been reliable? So your client was Adrian Andrews. That's correct. Well, he says the two of them met. If they did, then there are, shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw a suspicion. If you could do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. Why is that? That's because I value the trust between the client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Well, Mr. Rice, was this testimony just now of any of important? Of course, it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. De Killer had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that his client wrote really was Adrian Andrews? Uh, hmm, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. <clears throat> I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. Now then, would the witness please continue? one thing clear, and that is, the client knew the secret of the bear figure ring. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Roy, I think all of us already knew that. Uh, oh, really? Witness, please continue with your testimony.
I got plenty of room, but no battery power. Please stop sidestepping my questions. What, what do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I've already told you, Mr. Wright, I did. It was only through talking with my fit. With him face to face that I began to trust him. That's when I thought, I can't get to trust this person as a client. Hmm. It's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now any important? If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was a, of the utmost uh, importance. Oh, really? If that's the case, witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. From the moment I saw him, I thought I could trust this person as a client. But as we know, now know, that was not how it turned out, correct? What do you mean? Adrian Andrews turned out to be a client who couldn't stick to the rules, right? Well, yes, I suppose you are correct. Hmm. So I would like to check one last time. Are you sure your testimony is accurate?
pair. Fine, I'm sure there will be a pair she is visually in one for this room. Free that item for me. Something about this girl part. That is, and that is, the client knew the secret of the bear figure. I saw him. Adrian is a female. I would like to go over this one more time. You made Adrian Andrews out of barn took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, but that is an impossible tale. But what? Shelly the killer? You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. What? Why would you say that? Because you made one big slip up about her. So what is the issue? What did you say just now about her? If you have had ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. Oh! <laughs> or order, order in the court, Mr. Wright. What is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following, that he always meets the fifth face to face with his client when taking the request, but he has never met Adrian Andrews in person? Yes, Your Honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. DeKiller's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. <clears throat> Mr. Edwards, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is without a doubt a very an androgynous name. Um, yes I see. Unluckily for Mr. The Killer, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' gender. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. W what What is going on? Shelly The Killer! This court demands an explanation. Um... I, I think somehow I must have mixed up the, this client with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Arr, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Very well, but this time please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. Request taking part two. Yes, now I remember. I took the request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having uh, met my client. The request was for the murder of Juan Correa and two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the e end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. Hmm, so he took this job through a letter. He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony, which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us, I know. I can't make him suspicious, but I think we're okay, like, we could do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Now then, let's begin the cross-examination. But then you say that. But then you just say that you always meet your clients. Yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But then you meet your clients this time. No, I did not. Oh, come on. Oh, come now. Let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Using our silkiest voice is not going to work on me. All right then, just cough it up and confess. Mr. Wright, you can't badger a witness with such harsh words. Um, you're a lawyer, so behave like one and be 
and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Now then, do you have any proof that Mr. The Killer Mez Quine? I don't have any proof. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. Hmm, I see. Then your line of questioning was just another waste of time. Sadly for us, Your Honor. That is the nature of right and wrong. <laughs> Why could you not meet a certain client? Recently, I've been receiving more requests. If I met each and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. Nice business opportunities. On top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I have joined the times, and now I take requests via electronic mail. Electronic mail. Do you have to mail that in a special insulated envelope? Oh, I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. Why meant it by electronic mail is commonly referred to as email. Email? In the context of mimicry, the judge would be a parrot hands down. <clears throat> anyway, so you took this job without having met your client and... Two or three other small things. Two or three other things? Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let it slide that? It'd be really bad if I push this button the wrong way and he gets mad. The killer sounds like one sharp man. I should try, try to find a better way to do this without making him suspicious. Let's continue with the testimony with it, if you please. So you're saying that you never saw your client's face, not even once? I did, once. It was when I went to give my client a bigger ring. Hmm, yes, I see. But Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at the time. A mask? The Nickel Samurai Mask, I'm guessing. Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about this? Do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? No objection. I think I could pull something out, out of what he said, but it would be really bad if I did something and made him mad over something trivial. There are no problems with the testimony, Your Honor. We've pretty much reached the end of our rope here, huh? Seems like we're still okay to me, and that's exactly why it's so bad. At the rate we're going, we still end up completely destroying the killer's lives. If we do that, you already know how serious of a situation that will put us in. Uh, oh yeah. All I can do now is pray that those items reach us in time. related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney. Yes? Everything I've said from the beginning has not has been nothing but beneficial for your client, which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Could it be that you are planning to betray your own client? The, that I smell the stench of a backstabber, and should you turn out to be one? W wait! Uh-oh. This is looking really fast. I shouldn't pr press my lock, or I have to think. Is it, is it worth pursuing? Witness, this is very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs uh, your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Corita's suitcase. Hmm, then what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client. Interesting. Hmm, this information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include, that, include what you just stated in your testimony, as you wish. 
One needs to know what's to find the bear figurine and to give it to Adrian Andrews. Oops, I meant to press. I found this figurine at Mr. Ungard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Ungard, I'm sure. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Rice, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? So, the, the killer says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews, but I know somewhere in that statement there is a contradiction. And yet, I know that if I present something trivial here, he will cut the connection on his end. If you want to make a strong point, Phoenix, you have to present strong evidence. She's right. So, now what, Dr. Wright? Think it over again or present evidence. With this, let's go over this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine, and she told you to take the bear, bear, and wait for her at the, the on guard mansion. Is that correct? Yes. Where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. W what? This is a battle with. I can't let let up on him. I don't think it is possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. taking the hallway right after the murder. So what do you think? Witness! Mr. The Killer? Oh, I'm sorry. I weren't, went to visit the water closet for a second. Huh? Mr. Attorney, I think it's time I say, say this in terms even you could comprehend. If you ask me any more of these pointless questions, there will be no mercy. Urgh! Now, I would like to move on with my testimony. Well, I'm out of time for right now, so thanks for watching. Until next time, to be continued, baby.